city. And uh, by the way, this is more or less the border between the Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, and the Jewish quarter on the other side. Right over there in the east, it's the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and it's sitting right on the Temple Mount, right towering over the Western Wall, the holiest site in the world for the Jewish people. And of course, the Temple Mount today is held as the third holiest site in the world for the Muslims. So you're watching a holy site for Christians behind me, a holy site for Jewish over there, and right above it, a holy site for the Muslims. No doubt, a center of religions that is within one square mile. It is phenomenal how we are so talented in creating religions and it's so hard for us to really worship God in the most simple way. One of the things that uh, so many people around the world, I believe, are mistaken about is the fact that they look at Islam today as the possible candidate for the world religion. And the reason is very simple. They see places and they see countries that are seeking to create dominance, such as Iran and maybe organizations or terrorist organizations such as ISIS that wants to create worldwide caliphate. But one thing they forget, they forget that Islam is not calling for all people to worship God as they are. Islam is actually calling for submission by the sword. And it's a different story. It's a different story because that's not what we see in the book of Revelation when it comes to the description of a new and emerging world religion. By the way, that mistake leads people to believe that the Antichrist is also a Muslim because they believe that there is the Muslim Mahdi who is their Messiah and his coming will be as if that's the Antichrist himself. That's another thing that is very unlikely. A, because I don't know even a single Israeli Jew that will look at a Muslim as his Messiah. And B, I don't understand why a Muslim needs to get to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and enter into a Jewish temple to declare himself as God when he has the third holiest site in the world for Islam there. In other words, it has to be something different. It has to be something out of the ordinary, something that the world has not seen before. And it's very interesting because we often look at the existing religions as, as probably candidates for that. But I am offering today a different perspective. I believe that there is an existing religion that is ready to be as a shell for something new that is being injected into it. And I'm talking about the Catholic Church. This is the only one that fits the bill of all the descriptions of the book of Revelation. The Catholics never ever looked at themselves the way we call them Roman Catholics. Catholicism did not start in Rome. It started in Constantinople, in what Istanbul is today. And the word Catholic means universal. It means it belongs to everyone. The Catholic Church today, and for the last at least seven, eight years, maybe more, we see an unbelievable concentrated effort with hundreds of millions of dollars that are being poured into it to reach out to every part of world population in order to bring them all under a new concept of the Catholic Church. A few years ago, there was a conference at the Kenneth Copeland Ministries Center in the United States and Bishop Tony Palmer, on behalf of Pope Francis, came and offered a crowd of enthusiastic, charismatic, Protestant Christians. He came to offer them an offer. And he said to them, Catholic means universal. And if you are Christians, it doesn't matter where you're from, you're Catholic. We know that the first thousand years, there was one church, it was called the Catholic Church. And the word Catholic means universal. It doesn't mean Roman. Catholic means, if you're born again, raise your hand if you're born again. You're a Catholic. Come back home. Come back to what everything really should be. Take back, redeem what belongs to you. We are Catholics. And then he played a video that was sent by Pope Francis. Dear brothers and sisters, excuse me, because I speak in Italian, but I am not speaking English. But uh, I will speak uh, no Italian, no English, but carefully. Io vi parlo come fratello. 
e vi parlo così semplicemente con gioia e nostalgia facciamo crescere la nostalgia perché questo ci spingerà a trovarci a abbracciarci perché questo è un miracolo il miracolo dell'unità è incominciato he did not even mention Mary even once knowing it's a crowd of protestants that don't believe that Mary is anything divine and it's quite amazing to see this is probably the first pope in the history that reached out to the protestants that way and it's very interesting because uh, it followed bishop kenneth copeland going to the vatican saying the protestant movement has come to an end no more protest no more protestant movement that's it